All right, Patrick, thank you. We're continuing our coverage of this very fluid situation at the Rainbow Bridge. Right now, we are joined by Mario Rodriguez. Mario is the president of Force Study Protection and has a law enforcement background. Mario, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. So first, just as a security expert, I want to get your general reaction to this afternoon's events. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a pretty fluid uh, situation, as you mentioned. Uh, the first thing that we thought of when we had a team brief this afternoon was uh, Director Ray from the FBI's uh, testimony last week on the Hill and his conversation was that uh, the United States was kind of under a direct attack with everything going on in the Middle East that uh, there were some cause for concerns to be vigilant in our own communities at the moment uh, so obviously again information continues to evolve and change but that was the first reaction that we had people watching at home this might be a scary situation for a lot of us here in Western New York we're all on edge from this what do you suggest to folks who are watching, their kids are coming home from school right now. What should people be doing right now? I think being vigilant and having open discussions. Um, this is not a time to be fearful. I think it's one of the most empowering moments of our, our time. Uh, obviously, our community has experienced terrorism uh, with the top shooting here last year. I think it's important for us to take the opportunity to come together, have community support, and rely on one another to have that dialogue at the moment. And Maria, we, we spoke with you after 514, and you spoke of situational awareness, and I think that also applies now to today's events. Talk on a little bit about that. We break it down in its simplest form. We're, we're doing that in our in our day-to-day. -day. If you have kids, you have children, you're looking at risks. Don't go here. Don't go there. Watch out for that you know puddle or slip and fall. On a higher level, we want you to apply that same strategy. You're, you're doing risk components in your everyday life. Apply it on a bigger scale. If you see something, say something kind of have that spider sense in a way, and if you feel a little something on edge, go with that instinct. Just for a background for our viewers, I should have asked this first. For SETI Protection, what does your security firm exactly do, and how do you help this community? Thank you. Yeah, so we're a security risk management company, full enterprise security, everything from cybersecurity all the way to the physical components of that, the risk assessments, those vulnerability assessments, and then uh, the protection levels and making recommendations at its highest points. So as we mentioned, you know, the situation is very fluid. There's a lot to look at. There's a lot to confirm. But what are some of the things, you know, authorities will be looking at, you know, immediately now and especially over the coming days as well? Yeah, I think obviously the turkey trot is, is tomorrow. Uh, our community is obviously going to be a little bit on edge. So you're going to have an all hands on deck approach. Um, they're still trying to assess the situation in Niagara Falls at the moment. Uh, I would expect that that bridge is going to be open and all the bridges and transportation are going to be back open probably later on tonight. Uh, but I, I would say that the next coming days are going to be high alert aspects. Anything that's going on in the community, you're going to see a heavy physical presence uh, of law enforcement, uh, but it's not to be one that's going to be intimidating by any means. What is your firm doing right now as soon as you heard about this news? Yeah, we've been pretty active with most of our clients immediately. Uh, you saw the listing that they had a moment ago with many of the local community uh, locations being shut down. Uh, that means that we're trying to stay fluid in making sure their emergency response and preparedness and those business continuity plans that they have in place are being applied appropriately. It's also worth noting, too, the day before Thanksgiving is the busiest travel day of the entire year. What would you say to any travelers out there, whether they're flying out, driving out, what would you say to them? Yeah, I have family that's traveling at the moment. We just had a conversation prior to coming on the air. Um, I, I recommend, again, being vigilant, having a plan in place, and, uh, and making sure that you have direct dialogue and communication. Um, and obviously, we're relying on technology in many ways. If you don't have a way to communicate through that and you don't have, you know, text goes off or we lose some signal, have a backup plan in place to at least know uh, how to communicate through that. Interesting. So is there something that everyone should have in the house right now in case of a situation arising? You know, it, should people be stocking up on certain items around the house? Yeah, I, I think it's not just right now, but I think it's in general. You should have kind of what we refer to as a go bag, and you should have glow sticks, something you can break and create light in case we lose power. Um, you know, you should have a backup generator if you have one. Uh, have communication abilities that you can make sure that you can have dialogue with your friends or family. There's wireless um, communication that if it goes off, you can do satellite phones. Uh, relatively inexpensive aspects that you can do to prepare yourself and your family. And Mario, before we let you go, anything else you would like to share with viewers at home? 
No, I, I think, um, again, it's a very fluid situation that we're going through. Information continues to evolve and change. Um, again, this is not a time that I think we need to be fearful. It's a, an empowering aspect right now that we take control of that situation and bring it back to ourselves in the community. Um, I think this Buffalo community, there's a reason we're called the city of good neighbors. We, we have the opportunity and the backbone to be resilient, and I think it's an opportunity for us to come together and show what we're capable of again. All right, Mario Rodriguez, thank you so much thank for you. joining us thank this you for afternoon. Me. Appreciate it.